have gotten all Team Affinity showdowns up to the final boss and have completed each and every single showdown prior to that to go ahead and help you do the same, that way making it easier for you to defeat the final boss and complete each showdown at 100%. So what do we do in the initial draft when it comes to selecting players? Inside of the initial draft, I want you to select the best power hitter that is available regardless of whether he is a right-handed hitter or left-handed hitter. When it comes to these live series players, as always, pay attention to inside edge because it makes them play way above their attributes. When it comes to the perks inside the initial draft, you always want to select perks that have exit velocity boost and then after you see an exit velocity boost perk, you got to go ahead and analyze and see which one would be active most of the time. For example, hero time is the most ideal perk to have. If you can get the silver, gold, and diamond version of hero time, equip all three and keep it on you for the, your entire showdown run because you are always going to have three times the exit velocity boost because each and every single moment is in the ninth inning and hero time, all it needs to be is the seventh inning or later. Rally time is another great exit velocity boost, but rally time needs you to be trailing. So anytime that there is a tied game that you're entering into, rally time is not going to be one that is going to positively affect you. And then last but not least, if you are using down but not out or lead off magic, you will see that these exit velocity boosts are very circumstantial. Most of these moments start you off with a runner on base. So unless you drive that runner in and it's a sacrifice fly or a sacrifice bunt, you most likely are never going to have the opportunity to have no runners on base unless a specific moment starts you off with that. Now, if you're always waiting for two strikes, then this would also be like hero time, one of the most beneficial ones as you will always be in the two strike count whenever you are ready to hit. Some bonus tips are if there is a runner on first your leadoff hitter is usually always hitting and the runner on base is always your eighth hitter so i would highly suggest putting a good bunter even if it's someone that's inside of your bench as your leadoff hitter someone that has great drag bunting you might have to go into your further bench in order to find that player and then put them as your leadoff hitter with whoever you want to be your official hitter after he bunts out and moves the runner over replacing him the next time he gets an opportunity to hit if that's the case you also always want to play it safe regardless of the difficulty of the showdown or the showdown because it is a pain in the butt to make it far and then have to restart all over again and before you head into any of these showdowns you always want to manage your squad according to who you're facing next and also manage your perks according to who you're facing next like i said hero time is active at all times so that is a perk that you never want to remove once you equip it but if you have rad time for example it would not work on this first showdown moment that we have because the game is tied so instead you would want to have rally time and down but not out or if you're able to let's say for example get to sacrifice flies in order to drive the run in the exit velocity boost with no runners on base would also be beneficial here unfortunately i do not have a clip of me doing this but in previous showdown guides i have shown you all this but once you beat a showdown it will take you to a draft and you will have to draft a player and you will have to draft a perk do not draft the player or the perk whenever it's presented instead back out once you back out, you are able to go ahead and see who you are facing next, as well as the moment description, meaning that you can see if it's a tie game or if you're trailing. Why does that help you? Well, first and foremost, you get to see whether it's a right-handed pitcher or a left-handed pitcher, and you can draft that diamond, gold, whatever tier player it is to benefit you even better for that specific moment, as well as selecting the perk if it's one where you're trailing like rally time that's going to benefit you more than one like no runners on base especially when there are going to be runners on base when you start off that moment final bonus tip is going to be don't be afraid to use directional if you're struggling with zone you are not required to play how you would play online to try and get better use whatever you can to your advantage if you have to change the camera angle do that if you have to change the pci do that if you need to change your hitting interface 
do that. I'd love if you could do me a big favor and hit that like button, or subscribe button, notification bell. Check out the description for the Twitch where we stream every single day at 9 p.m. Eastern. But let's continue. We're going to be starting off with the East. Inside of the East, we face two left handers and six right handers. The final boss will also be a right handed pitcher. We face Ryan Yarbrough as our first moment we had a tie game with the runner on third the runner on third is going to be your eighth hitter then we went on to face kyle wright another right-handed pitcher we had a runner on second with a tie game the runner on second was also our eighth hitter when we faced willis we were trailing two runs and there were no runners on base your leadoff hitter is the hitter and keep in mind that willis is a left-handed pitcher so you're gonna want your righties to be up earlier inside of the lineup then we went ahead and faced Andrew Kittridge. Keep in mind, most of these are on rookie difficulty, so that is going to be very beneficial for you in order to complete this, and you should be seeing a lot more strikes. But versus Andrew, it was a tie game, and we had the eighth hitter be our first base runner. This would be a great example, or any of the ones where there is a runner on base, for you to put your leadoff hitter as a bunter and then replace him with who you want to officially hit if he has an opportunity to hit again. That way, you you can get a good bunt placed down and move that runner into scoring position to either tie the game or cut the deficit down. We then faced Steven Strasburg. 3-0, we were trailing 15 outs, and there were runners on third and second. Your seventh hitter is going to be the runner on third, and your eighth hitter is going to be the one on second base. So make sure you have speedy guys at your eighth and seventh spot even if they are guys that you will replace whenever they come up to hit with guys on your bench that actually have good hitting stats. We then face Jordan Romano. This is going to be one of the more difficult ones for you to do, especially so close to the final boss. You have a tie game and you have to score one run before recording nine outs. Play it safe. If you have to bunt runners over, go ahead and do that. And if you have to pinch run, if you have someone slow on the base paths, go ahead and do that as well. And then finally, we have Charlie Morton. We were trailing by two runs and we had to take the lead before 16 outs. Once you complete all of that, there are no runners on base on that one either. You get to face Noah Syndergaard and you have to score five runs before recording 25 outs. For the central, it was similar to the east. We faced two left-handed pitchers and then six right-handed pitchers throughout our path. The final boss is going to be a right-handed pitcher as well. Versus Garrett Crochet, left-handed pitcher, we start with the runner on second base, tied game. The runner on second is going to be your eighth hitter, so put someone that's speedy as your eighth hitter. Then we faced another lefty back-to-back, -back, Drew Pomeranz. We were trailing 2-0, 17 outs, and the bases are loaded. At first is going to be your eighth hitter, at second base is going to be your seventh hitter, and at third base is going to be your sixth hitter. So go ahead and put the speeds according to how you want it to be. Probably want someone that's really fast to be the one at first, and then someone that doesn't necessarily have to be fast, but isn't slow either at third. That way a sacrifice fly can go ahead and drive the runner in. We then face C's. With C's, there was a runner on first, 10 outs, and we had to go ahead and basically walk it off against him. Once we faced Feller, there were 16 outs. We were trailing by two. You start off with no runners on base. We then went against Bob Gibson. Now, in the central, it was a little bit more difficult this moment than the ones we usually had prior. We're facing Bob Gibson, and we are trailing by one run, meaning it's 1-0. We are losing. There are no runners on base, and we only have 10 outs to go ahead and score two runs. If you feel comfortable with however many runs you have, feel free to skip that and go to the final boss and if you were to go ahead and do that and go to the final boss since there would be a much larger run differential between your team and the final boss whenever you get a hit you can steal all the way to third because they will not throw since there is a big run differential we then faced Brandon Woodruff. Brandon Woodruff, we entered the game trailing two, and we had to take the lead before 16 outs. There were no runners on base. This was similar to the East, the final one before the final boss. And then last but not least, we had to face Greg Holland. They were 
nine outs, no runners on base, and we were also trailing a run. So very similar to the one with Bob Gibson, we are playing at Kauffman Stadium, and that is a stadium that is pitcher friendly. So if you're not the best hitter, you might want to skip this one similar to the Bob Gibson one. If you were able to beat the Bob Gibson one, then you might want to skip this one. And you might be trailing, let's say 12 to 20, but every hit you should be able to move the runner over to third base and then drive them in with a bloop, sacrifice fly, however you want to do it until the game is within four runs. And then last but not least, you will be facing Max Scherzer as your final boss inside of the central team affinity. The West was a little different from the others. Inside of the West, we had three left-handed pitchers and five right-handed pitchers. So you might want to emphasize a little bit more in power versus left inside of your drafts. And then the final boss is going to be a right-hander, but it's a little different, the final boss, than it is for the prior two. And you will see that in just a second. So when we face Lou Trevino, he is a right-handed pitcher. There was a runner on second base. That is going to be your eighth hitter. We then faced Bruce Star Gratterall. We were losing by one. There was a runner on third and you have 12 outs to go ahead and take the lead. Then you face Kyle Freeland. That is a left-handed pitcher. You're playing at Coors Field. You have nine outs to basically score a run and you start with a runner on first. Then we face Don Sutton at Dodger Stadium. We are entering the game trailing by a run and we have to take the lead before recording 12 outs. That is two extra outs opposed to the Bob Gibson one. We then went to Angel Stadium to face Patrick Sandoval. We are entering the game trailing one run and we have to take the lead before recording 10 outs. This this is going to be the similar one to Bob Gibson. Then Jacob deGrom, we're facing him, trailing two. We need to take the lead before recording 15 outs. No runners on base. And last but not least, Vida Blue entering the game tied. We have to take the lead before recording eight outs. And then we face Liam Hendricks. This is going to be another game at the Athletic Stadium. And we have to take the lead down two before recording 14 outs. So we need to score three runs before recording 14 outs versus Liam Hendricks. At the final boss, obviously, you always want to change your perks and your lineup to go ahead and give you the biggest advantage versus the pitcher, regardless of whether he is a right-hander or a left-handed pitcher. With all that being said, I hope you are able to complete all of these showdowns without a problem and get yourself closer to completing these set three collections, getting yourself either Adley Rutschman, Ronald Acuna Jr., or Martin DeHigo. If you did end up enjoying today's content, once again, please make sure to hit that like button, or subscribe button, notification bell. Check out the description for the Twitch, which we stream every single day at 9 p.m. Eastern, except for Tuesdays, and also other links. Have a blessed day and night. Stay positive, stay safe, stay blessed, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.